Hello, future juniors and future seniors. My name is Mr. Davenport. And I'm Mr. Jesus. And we are going to go through the wonderful and interesting world of course selection. Well, maybe not that interesting, but it's very important because there's so much information that's packed in there. Um, and so are you ready to go down this, this fun journey, Mr. Jesus? Let's do it. Well, the first thing we have to know is who are your counselors? And that is a question that has plagued many students for many many years. And so if you don't know who your counselor is, you probably need to know who they are because they're going to be very vital to your high school career. Um, so we're going to kind of go over our office real quick. And so to start off is uh, Miss Graham and she's our student support uh, coordinator as well as she is uh, a VP here on our campus. Uh, next is myself, Mr. Davenport. I'm, you cannot confuse me with anyone in our office because I'm the only male. So my name, uh, names I work with is A through Davidson. And then right here, my presenter in crime is going to be Mr. Jesus, and she's going to be Davis through H.I. Miss Wilson, I like to say, if you want to go home, that will be Miss Wilson because she is H.O. through M.E. Miss Snyder is going to be uh, is going to be right here. She's M.I. through S.I. And Miss Gibson right here will be S.J. through Z. Then we have Miss Passini right here. She's our test coordinator. Many of you have got to know her this year. Many of you will get to know her. She's going to be doing a lot of ACT stuff, but also doing um, the ACT waiver and all that. So here's who we are. We are here to help you, to support you in any way we can. All right. Course selection guide. It's been redone. We've done put a lot of work in there, put some really cool things. We have a little AP uh, like stickers in there, or not stickers, like logos and we have NCA logos. We've redesigned to make it easier for you. One thing that we're not doing, we're not printing it out. We're going to save some trees. So we're going to have you download that and go over that with your parents. You can go to the C, uh, C, uh, CHS website and download uh, that in the Student Success Center. We will have it available uh, on all the websites for ACE, ACE North, and the Cabot Freshman Academy. Somehow you're watching this video, you will have access to this course selection guide. All right, a lot of information here. We're going to try to make this as quick and as, as not as painful as possible. Mr. Jesus, take it away. All right, so just because a course is offered in the course selection guide doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be offered. Any courses that have fewer than 15 students may not be offered. Also, for you guys that are current sophomores and juniors, you know the rules. We only do schedule changes for a couple of different ways. First, to correct errors. Uh, second, to meet graduation requirements. And then third, in case a course is not offered and we have to move you to a different class, we do not make schedule changes for lunches or teachers. That doesn't happen. If you are planning to play college sports, whether it be Division One, Division Two, make sure you let your counselor know there are certain eligibility requirements for NCAA. Plus, there's a process to that. We need to kind of help guide that. And then also, if you are a junior or senior and you've already gotten quite a few of your math um, credits underneath your belt, it is required that a junior or senior year, you must have a math, math class in one of those two years. That's for both Smart Core and Core graduates. Uh, we have two different tracks for graduation, Smart Core and uh, Core. The difference is, little, is basically the levels of math and science that's required. You have to have four uh, credits of English, four credits of math, four credits, or three credits of science, which includes biology, physical science, chemistry, or physics. Social studies, three credits, which includes civics, economics, world history, American history. Uh, half a credit of PE, half a credit of health, half a credit of fine arts, half a credit of oral communications, but we call it the class professional communication. So if you see it in the course catalog, that meets that requirement. And then six and a half elective focus or career focus electives. Um, for the math, for Smart Core, you gotta make sure you have Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and a math beyond Algebra 2. For regular core, if you are signing up to take British Algebra 2, you have to get a Smart Core waiver sign that takes you off the Smart Core track. Also, if you pick a different type of science, it's not civics or, or chemistry or physics, then you need to have a Smart Core waiver sign for that. This is the Smart Core waiver, it's pretty simplistic. Um, you don't need to worry about having that signed unless you're choosing one of those classes and your counselor will let you know that you need to have this signed. There's, there doesn't keep you from getting scholarship, doesn't keep you from Arkansas Academic Challenge. It's just something we have to have on file. Honor grads, Mr. Davenport, let's talk about that. All right, we're going to talk a lot about um, honor grads. And so, you know, this year, our seniors are the first year graduating of the, the new requirements. 
uh, and then you will be the second and third classes because we're talking to uh, future juniors and seniors right now. So what does it take to be, uh, it builds on each other. We have three categories, but we want to just talk about some stuff real quick. No D's or F's on the final transcript can be on your transcript. So that means any course can be retaken for grade improvement, but it must be the identical course except for one exception. And that is pre-AP pre Algebra 1. And that's because, to be honest with you, we're not going to send you back to 8th grade. And some seniors, we're not going to send you back to the Freshman Academy. So we will be able to take that. We'll make that work for you guys. If you have any questions, go to the Course Selection Handbook. Email your counselor. We'll help you with that one. All right. So we're going to talk about the first level. Uh, you worked really hard, and you have a 3.5 to a 3.75. Well, congratulations. You worked very hard. But here are the two things that you need to have to also be in honors. You must have two years of advanced level or higher junior and senior English. So that would be advanced English or uh, or AP English or college English your senior year or or like that. So that's what you have to do. It has to be advanced or higher. Then you have to have two years of a foreign language and it must be the same foreign language. So it doesn't have to be consecutive, which we say that you probably need to do, but it has to be two years of, the, of a foreign language. All right, you have a 3.76 to a 4.0, it's the same English requirements. Two years of advanced level or higher your junior and senior year, two years of a foreign language. The only difference is now that you must take one additional AP or concurrent class that's beyond the junior and senior English. That basically means anything that's AP or concurrent that's not English. All right, you guys got that? Give me a head nod. All right, perfect. Now you're like, Mr. Davenport, I have above a 4.0. What do I need to do? Well, that's Distinguished High Honors, and first of all, congratulations to all of you, but that's a lot of work to do right there. All right, same English requirements, same foreign language. The only difference is now you have to have two additional AP or concurrent classes beyond that junior and senior English. Now, here's the deal. Most of you have that, but some of you need to check that because we have some new weighted classes that are coming in, so we really have to make sure that you take all the classes that meet the requirements, and you can find those in the course selection guide. All right, there you go. Dropping and adding classes. In the fall semester, you have the first, actually the beginning of both semesters, fall and spring, you have the first 10 days of a semester to drop and add a class for credit. No exceptions. I mean, you can just have the form signed, bring it to your counselor, okay? Now, past 10 days, you can drop from a more rigorous course to a less rigorous course, or you can drop a class for study hall, not pick up another class for credit. Then um, after the 22 days, you, if you drop a class, it becomes an F on your transcript. There's no other way around that. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule. That's our AP and pre-AP classes. Mr. Davenport's going to take this. All right, so we see this a lot. And, and so here we go. We give you the first 10 days of, of the semester. Like any student, if this is not a class for you, you're more than welcome to drop it with a parent signature in the form. We'll put you in another class, and we'll, we'll go on our way. Now, after day 11 to 22, if you still feel like this is not the class for you, pre-AP or AP, you can get a pre-AP or AP drop form with the teacher's recommendation and also Miss Elliott's, the, the, the AP coordinator here on campus signature, and you'll allow, to, will allow you to drop that class. You'll have to go down to the less rigorous version. So, example, AP U.S. History, you would go down to regular U.S. History. AP World, you would go down. Well, now, sometimes there's not an equivalent AP class, and you will have to go down into like a study hall and you would not be able to add another class. Now, here's the thing. You're going the first nine weeks. It's still not going exactly how you want. We give you another opportunity to drop. And so don't say we're not going to help you again, because at the end of the semester, if you still feel like it's not the class for you, we're going to give you the first 10 days of the second semester to drop nothing else after that. So if you're just look at this screen, if you understand, you're good to go. All right. Course selections. All right. So we're, we're going to start talking about the different uh, courses that we offer. Now, we're not going to go everything through detail. A lot of you know the classes. We have a course selection guide, but here's what we've done. We've tried to make it a little easier. So we've created a new registration form that's check boxes, and it has all the course numbers on it, and it has all the uh, names on it, but we're going to try to throw that up there so you guys can really work through that. Now, here's what I need you to do, and I think, Mr. Jesus, you'll agree. Choose carefully, okay? Choose wisely. How many times, Mr. Jesus, do we have kids that choose classes because they say, I don't know, I just took it because my friend took it. Or mm -hmm. I have had a few students say, well, I took it because the cute boy next to me or the cute girl next to me took it. No. Or my girlfriend took it. Or my girlfriend took it. Or my friends took it. And then sometimes they're not even friends with those people anymore. So here's the thing. Choose the classes for you. 
Choose the classes that are going to best help you in the future. If it's college, choose the classes that are going to help you that. If it's classes that are going to help you in the technical or in a career, choose those classes. But just don't choose to choose classes. Like, have a purpose. So consult with your teachers. Consult with your counselors. Consult with your parents. Look for the prereqs of the class. And then we'll be good to go. So we'll talk more about this form later. But here we go. All right. In English, you have multiple different levels of English to go. Uh, you have, when you start looking at junior, you have advanced, regular, AP, senior English. We even have two new senior English classes offered this year. So you have a variety of different ways to go. Have a conversation with your English teacher about what you, what they think is your best fit. We have a couple of different ways that we can look at this. We've got a couple of different charts to show you the kind of the flow of the English classes. So if you're in regular English 10 this year, um, you can, you have a, a variety of different ways you can actually go. Um, you can, um, you'll go straight to English 11 or you could take advanced English 11, which actually I don't have it on the slide, but you can take advanced English 11, regular English 11. You could go into AP Lit, uh, Lang. It's not recommended unless you've had the pre-AP English 10 because it prepares you for that AP class. So definitely if you're thinking that you need to talk with your teacher, but you can go advanced or regular English 11. If you're currently a junior, and you're not wanting, if you're not concerned about honors, any one of these classes will fit for you, even if you're not considering honors. You can do regular English, digital English 12. Um, and then we also have freshman um, English 1 and 2. Now, keep in mind that has a GPA and ACT requirement with those classes. You have to have a 2.5 GPA and you have to have a 19 on the reading and a 19 on the English on the ACT. Now, the two new English classes are transitional English 12 and the professional reading um, and reading and writing for STEM. Those are two separate English classes, but they're paired together because they're both a semester piece. And you have to take both to count for English 12. Transitional English is gonna be working on those English skills to help you be better and, and work better in, a, in, a, in society as an adult. You're gonna work on more technical language, um, not focusing as much on the Shakespeare stuff. Um, the professional reading and writing and the reading and writing for STEM are gonna help you in the professional world. All right, the second, the second style classes you can look at, if you're pre-AP English 10 right now, even if you're regular English 10, you can go that advanced English 11. Um, and then, like I said, we have AP language and composition for those juniors. If you're a current junior, and let's say you're in advanced English 11, you can take advanced English 12. There's a digital version of that. Or you can take the freshman comp one and two. That will still keep you in this honors track. All, any one of these English classes keeps you in the honors track as far as for undergraduate. If you're an AP Lang, we strongly encourage you to go AP Lit. Now, that's not to say, if you're AP Lang and you decide you don't wanna go on that AP route, you can go freshman English, you can step back and take advanced English and still remain on that honors track, all right? We also offer several other electives. You've got professional communication, which meets that oral communication requirement by the state. We have mythology and journalism one can be taken by any student. Forensics debate, newspaper, and yearbook have to have teacher approval. Mathematics, you have to have four math credits. And keep in mind, if you have your four math credits before walking into your junior year, you still have to have a math your junior or senior year. That is a Cabot High School requirement. And I'll be honest with you, it is just good, it's good practice to take a math every year. Math is a skill, it's something you need to keep practicing. Okay, make sure you double checking the smart core requirements, make sure you're on the right track. If you're in geometry this year, and let's say math's not your thing, you can go to Bridge Algebra 2, just have a smart core waiver sign, and then you would take Algebra 2 the year after. If you're in geometry and you want to go Algebra 2, you could do that, and then you have several different options your senior year. You can take regular Algebra 3, you can take the Algebra 3 slash College Algebra. Remember, College Algebra is a concurrent class, so there's a GPA ACT requirement. You could go pre-calculus, you could take AP Statistics after Algebra 2. We now have a new math that can fit that third or fourth math requirement. It's called technical math for college and career. It's only prerequisites are algebra and geometry. So you could take that before algebra two and then take to algebra two your senior year or vice versa. They don't really, they don't conflict. Um, so they're kind of in, not, they, they work together. But in order to go Algebra 3, those other classes that you may want to take your senior year, you're going to have to algebra, have Algebra 2 under year before you go into those classes. Then we also have those higher level classes. If you're a sophomore and you're a pre-AP Algebra 2 or you're a junior and you're in Algebra 2 and you want to look at your options, again, you could do the technical math for career in college. That's an option. 
regular algebra three. Um, you can even go from algebra three to pre-calculus. Anything on that top line and those red boxes can, you can go from one to the other. Um, you can even move into AP stats. If you are in uh, pre-AP algebra two as a sophomore, going into algebra three your junior year, because you can't take college algebra your junior year, you could take college algebra one semester and applied stats another semester. Both of those are concurrent classes. Both of those calls call, go towards college credit. <clears throat> science. Stratford, you're going to take science? Yeah, we'll do it. So just remember that three sciences are required for graduation. So check your smart core versus core requirements. One must typically take biology, which is in the 10th grade. We understand that sometimes that you've transferred in and you're and you've maybe already taken biology or you're you're it's kind of makes we're going to work with you so we understand it so usually you've already taken physical science usually in the ninth grade and then that leads for one one additional uh, class so the smart core curriculum is either phys, uh, physics or chemistry and then if you're a core then that would be something like environmental science or botany and zoo okay. or nan, uh, you know anatomy and physiology and so we offer a lot of other classes like AP environmental science. We offer AP versions of chemistry and physics. And so we're going to look in those charts right now to kind of talk about those. And so, all right, so if you are a sophomore, so we're talking to sophomores right now, juniors, I'm sorry, just kind of, just kind of not pay attention for just a quick second and then we'll get back to you. So your biology, you have an option to take physics, chemistry, environment, uh, and let's say phys uh, physics and chemistry. If you're going down the smart core route, physics and chemistry, here's the thing, if you want to take physics, you already have to have Algebra 2 as a prerequisite. So just have that in your mindset. Now, if you want to go down the the, uh, the core, then you can sign the waiver and do environmental science or a flex science course, and your counselor is going to help you with that. Now, here's, here's the thing I want you to do. If you're in regular biology and you want to take pre-AP classes, we're going to look at this next chart as well, so pay attention to that. So if you're in pre-AP biology or regular biology, once again, if you're in regular biology, talk to your teacher, and they'll tell you what's best for you. Uh, you can go down a couple different routes. You can go to pre-AP chemistry or regular chemistry, or you can go to uh, uh, AP biology or AP physics. Once again, you got to watch that recommendation and make sure you have the math. So there's all these different routes. Once you're in uh, now students, senior, uh, juniors, if you're in pre-AP chemistry right now, you can go down to AP chemistry. And so there's a lot of different things. Now, you can take AP biology and pre-AP chem at the same time. That you can do that. That's going to be a lot of work, and if and we're you can do that. So whatever you think is best, but once again, talk to your teachers, talk to your parents, talk to your counselors, and so it's a pretty easy kind of follow the charts. Most of you know what is next in your in your path. So all right, flex classes. So you saw the flex class option for the science. It wasn't in the math chart, but you can actually count any one of these classes as a fourth math or a third science and smart four. They do not meet honors requirement or NCAA, and these are the computer science programming classes and the AP computer science classes, but the, all, all four of those, any one of those can count as a fourth math or a third science as far as those flex classes go. All right, now we're going to talk about social studies. All right, 10th graders, we're going to talk to you real quickly. So if you're in AP U.S. history or regular U.S. history right now, you can take world history or AP world history as a junior. Now, some choose not to take that, and they say that to their senior year. You can do that. Some will take it now, so they have an open elective. Uh, we have a, you know, some will want to take U.S. government as a junior and then save to take world history as a, as a senior, and that's okay. Many of you are in civics and econ. Your only move is U.S. history or AP U.S. history, and then you'll take world history your senior year. Pretty easy. Same thing with uh, our juniors right now. If you're in U.S. history, you're taking world history. And if you're in world history right now, then you can choose any elective you want to take. So... Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Go ahead. Social studies, we, uh, uh, electives, we have psychology, sociology. And for this year, we, we rotate every other year, but we have AP U.S. government. And so if you're really in, you really want that AP credit and you're really into the government, that would be a great class um, for you to take. And then we have digital versions offered of American history and world history. But no, sometimes those classes don't always take, and they do fill up very quickly. So make sure that you understand that so you may not get it. Spanish, French. Hola, bonjour. Guten Tag. Ah, there you go. So, <laughs> foreign languages, which you can tell I'm not very good at. And so we offer three of them. And so we offer Spanish, French, and German. Remember, to move to take a third or fourth year of a foreign language, you need to take the pre-AP class for year two. 
Um, we do offer a concurrent only for Spanish 1 and 2 right now that is offered through ASUBB. We will talk about that more on our concurrent slide, but that is an offer for juniors uh, for juniors and seniors that can take. So sophomores can't take it, so you guys are all available to take it. If you want to be in the Spanish Honor Society, you got to have three years of Spanish. We just need everybody to know that. All right. Fine arts. Fine arts. All right. I'm not going to go through all of them because pretty much if you're involved in a fine arts, you know what it's all about. You know what's offered. You're already involved. But if you need a fine arts credit, a music appreciation is a great class to get that for you. Uh, AP Music Theory, AP Art History, uh, Stagecraft 1. Anyone can take Stagecraft 1. Um, but if you are in a fine arts, then you know the path that you're going. Here's what we offer. Remember, you have to have 0.5 of a fine arts credit. Um, but I love fine arts. I think it's it, it's a great program, so please be a part. If you want to join it, you're like, I'm kind of interested, then talk to who's over those programs and kind of ask them what you need to do. Health and PE. You have to have a semester of health and a semester of PE. Both are offered fall and spring, and I will tell you they're offered in the summer for anyone to take. Now, there is a cost to the summer programs. Uh, if you are in a, P, uh, a sport that is scheduled during the day, such as football, basketball, volleyball, you can earn up to one half credit for your athletic, and that can count towards your PE credit. Now, if you have a full year of ROTC, you can get a half a credit of PE and a half a credit of health. Those are past credits. There's not a grade to them, but they do get your credit and you're taken care of. You can get up to one full year of PE, and then once you get to that full year, we won't let you take PE anymore. I've actually had students ask that. I'm like, you already got a full year of PE. I can't take it again. No, because you don't get credit for it. So we keep you moving in that right direction. We also have some miscellaneous ones. Now, here's something that all you sophomores are going to be excited about. Next year, you can sign up to be a teacher's aide or for service learning if you choose to. Um, you get one maximum credit on this. If you keep your hours at 75 hours, I believe, for the year, you get a a service learning credit, which gives you an elective credit. It does look good on a transcript. Not available to 10th graders, but if you're in 11th or 12th grade, you can sign up for this. If you are planning to sign up for this, make sure you have your teacher sign off on your registration form saying that they give you permission for you to be a teacher's aide because we need to have that information. We also have a museum on this campus. Did you know that, Mr. Davenport? I, no, I didn't. Tell me more about it. We have a museum curator on this campus. Um, it's set up over in the Champs building, uh, Champs Hall. And it's, it's a lot of history of Cabot and Arkansas. They do a lot of the displays that you see in the library. You can get one full credit there. That is a first period class only, but you do get credit for that. We also have GT Seminar 1, GT Seminar 2. Typically, GT Seminar 1 is for 10th graders. You must be in two pre-AP classes, with a one being at least English or math. They prefer you to be in both pre-AP English or, and pre-AP math. GT Seminar 2 is for your higher level grades, and that is with teacher approval. All right, concurrent classes. We offer currently right now freshmen, English 1 and 2. I'm going to skip over Spanish for just a second. College Algebra, Applied Stats, and Principles of Biology for seniors only. Spanish 1 and 2 is open for both juniors and seniors. Now keep this in mind, though you still have an ACT and GPA requirement, and there's a lot of sophomores who have not taken the ACT. So if you are a sophomore thinking about taking concurrent Spanish 1 and 2, you need to have a couple of things under your belt. You need to have at least a year of Spanish a or, with an A or a B in the class, and you need to have the ACT taken before the school start, your school year starts. And you must have a 19 on the reading section of the ACT in order to be eligible for that class. For our seniors, you must have a 19 in English and reading for freshmen comp one and two. If you don't have that score when we do registration or you don't get that score before the end of the year, it's likely that you might not get registered in that class because we do that, that class fills up. But if you get the test, get it to your counselor, but make sure you get that ACT score. Uh, college algebra, it's 19 on math and reading. And applied statistics, again, it's a 19 on the math and reading. And they do have a little bit of a prerequisite for college algebra. They want you to have at least one semester of pre-calculus or one semester of Algebra 3. And then for Applied Stats, you have to have College Algebra with a C or better in that class. If you don't get that C in College Algebra, you won't get college credit. You can get high school credit, but you won't get college credit, and you won't be able to move on to Applied Stats if that's what you're wanting to do. And then Principles of Biology, it's a 19 on the reading. And I believe the Principles of Biology is a four-hour class. It counts as four hours. Uh, but you have to have a you have to have completed biology with 
uh, I would say a, a C or better in a regular biology class to be wanting to take that class. Currently right now you do get a full high school credit and then you get up to three hours or three hours, I think the biology is four hours of college credit through the ASU BB campus. Currently right now, the Arkansas Academic Challenge has got some money out there. So mm -hmm. seniors this year are actually being able to take two classes per semester for free because the money is there. And if they have the ACT scores, they qualify and for And second it. semester, they actually just, a lot of them are getting it paid for this semester as well. So uh, Yeah. And so because of this grant, the, they're paying for up to $125 per course. So BB actually lowered their cost of the classes to $125 per course, which is a steal. Um, and the tuition, of course, now keep in mind, tuition could change between now and next year, depending on money and funding and, and those kind of things. That's kind of out of our hands. That's an ACBB decision. But right now, this is what the cost is. Um, there is a representative from ACBB that does come to campus and help you, uh, you know, finalize all the, all the costs so don't, you don't have to worry about going to the campus. And there is a possibility that you're going to have to purchase books for your classes. So just keep that in mind. That is an added cost. Super cool opportunity to get a lot of college classes. Um, kind of out of the way and so you knock out that English and so what I tell students all the time real quickly like if English is not your thing if that's just you're good at it, but it's not your thing and that's not take it here don't take it at college if same mm -hmm. thing with college algebra if some of you are going down paths that you that's the only math that you need take it here so you have some more flexibility in college like do it it's, it's a great benefit to a lot of our students all right sorry all right, non-credit activities so, and athletics. Not non-credit activities. Basically, all we really have that's going to be anything that's any of our athletics and our, um, you know, our, our cheer, our dancing, and all sports. Um, so it's all about tryouts only. So for the most part, if you're in that sport, you put it down there. If you've already had tryouts, if 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 there's a question that you maybe you're trying out for a team and you're not really sure, don't put it in your thing. Once you make the team, we'll adjust your your schedule and request accordingly all right oh this is my favorite section mr davenport i, I love career and technical so much stuff we can talk about so many cool things but here's the thing there's been a lot of changes and so we want to kind of go over those changes um the number one question that we have always gotten and the question that i never could ever answer is what does it take to be a completer we're going to talk about that in just a second we're going to go over the pathways but here's the deal we offer you so many things to figure out what am i going to do in, for my career? Am I going to go to college? Am I going to go be a doctor? Am I going to go be a computer engineer? Am I going to go in the technical world? Am I going to go to tech school? Am I going to learn? So we offer so much more than just getting you ready to go to college. We offer you for your future and your career. So we have things in Agri and in ROTC and automotive and broadcasting and business and you know with East and I can go on and on family consumer science and engineering. Now I just want to say one thing about broadcasting. Many of you have told me you want to be YouTube stars. If you're not in broadcasting, then how are you going to be a YouTube star? Because that's what you're learning is those things. I just have to say, I had seven people tell me last year they want to be a YouTube star on their career goals. And they're not in broadcasting. I'm just saying, we offer something for anything. All right, let's move on to the pathways. So for uh, we're not going to go into the pathways in great detail because they're, they are in the book. But what we want to point out to you, though, is that the state has passed down some new regs when it comes to the completer status and being a completer in a pathway you they have levels and classes and you kind of have to take those classes in order so if you're a sophomore this year you've taken survey of agri systems then you can look to level two and you can pick from the level two class offerings if you're a junior and you've taken survey of agri systems guess what you got to look at level two as well if you're in the level two classes then you can look to the level three classes and choose from those selection of classes um, we have Agri has uh, five pathways to choose from. There are multiple ways. You can actually probably pick up multiple pathways if you so choose, choose to. One thing we want to make very clear is that you don't necessarily, there are some classes that have prerequisites, that you have to have this class before you can go in this one. There are some pathways. You could take whatever. If you want to take a few classes in Agri, that's fine. But you make sure there's not a prerequisite. But if you want to be a completer, which a lot of you want to be completers, Make sure that you follow. Now, because this is being rolled out kind of this year and this year, if there is a conflict, come talk to us. Let's see if we can work it out because we have just rolled this out. And some of you have to figure, have to move your classes around to get that figured out. So don't worry about that. Don't stress out. Just, it's going to be okay. If you're confused, ask questions. 
Air Force has its one, and some of these, some of these pathways only have one pathway, mm -hmm. and those classes are levelized. So you don't have a choice. If you're going in automotive, you have to have brakes before you can go into electrical uh, systems and steering and suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with broadcasting; it has one line. Um, now, business of education. I want to point this out to you. There is six pathways that are open right now, and every one of them requires survey business to be a completer in that pathway. Now, what I am going to tell you, though, is we are finding out from colleges that they're requiring a minimal computer competency test. And if you don't pass it, they're requiring you to take that uh, basically a survey business class at the college level and you're paying for it there. So if you can take it here and you, you get your certifications here, then that's going to be one lesson you have to do towards college. We have computer science. You have multiple classes on each level that you can look at as, as a possibility as first uh, completion. Talk to your counselor, talk to your computer science teacher, see what they say. In construction, we have two routes to go. Introduction to sk uh, skilled trades is definitely a level one. And if you haven't had that, the possibility it could be in a completer may not be there. Have a conversation with the carpentry teacher. Criminal justice, you have one line, and those classes build on each other just like engineering. Now, here's the interesting thing coming up in the next couple slides. There's some interesting things about the level three engineering classes that are going to be really exciting for you engineering yeah. students. Same thing, but remember, I want to go back to this. This is really important. If you're a junior and you decide to take a level one, then you go. You have to take introduction to criminal justice, and then you can only take foundations your senior year of enforcement. Same thing with engineering. You can, mm -hmm. if you're a junior, if you're going into your junior year, or you're a senior, oh, I want to take an engineering class. All you can take is intro to engineering design, and then if you, then you can take principles in. So this is the one that has prereq. So that's where you got to pay attention to what a prereq is. Okay. All right. I keep saying um, okay. Family, uh, family consumer science program of study. You have three levels. Uh, you have three pathways: human social sciences, nutrition science, and dietetics, which is brand new. We had two new classes this year: the advanced child care and the advanced nutrition and dietetics, which was offered this year for the first time. And then the education and training requires lifespan development. You don't need facts for that class or for that pathway. And then they have now changed that from orientation to teaching. It's now called te teaching, or Foundations of Teaching 1 and Methods of Teacher Instruction. So they've slightly changed some of those names. And then, of course, our medical academy, they're the same. It, it, it's pretty much the same. You have your level one, Foundations of Healthcare, Foundations of Sports Med. And then you have a variety of different way, uh, ways you can go level two. Everybody finishes level three with anatomy and physiology. All right. And then here is the exciting part for some of you CTE guys, or some of you guys, is that case animal science, case plant science, case agri power and tech, advanced information security one and two, civil engineering and digital electronics are all weighted courses. Now, they don't count as AP for honors. I got to point that out. They do not count as AP for honors, but they are weighted courses and they can help with the GPA. They'll count that A counts as five instead of a four point. So keep that in mind. So this is a good thing. And then the registration form. This is Mr. Davenport's baby right here. Every year, I want all of you to look at me and see my intensity. Every year, someone complains about the classes they did not get. And mostly it's because they didn't fill out their sheet, didn't tell us what they wanted, said, I don't care, or we couldn't read their handwriting, we couldn't do it, or they didn't know. Every year, there's someone that cries in my office. And I tell them, well, just got to fill out your sheet. So here's what I've done. We've listened to you. We've listened to some how to make the sheet better and all the different things. And so we've created a new sheet. And this is the this is the senior version, but we have one for each level. And so I want to kind of go over this and show you what we're going to do. Now, we're going to offer a hard copy, but we also have a digital copy that we can send, and then you can download it, and it has check marks on it, and you can type it in. And be First thing we need to do, put your name on there. That's one thing we have. One, sometimes we can never read the name, so make it legible. Let us read it. Put your birthday on there. Put your phone number, because here's the thing. There are times in the summer that maybe classes don't make, because we get here pretty much before you do. And we're really trying to work to get your schedules. And if there's a problem, we want to be able to get a hold of you. So give us a good number. And then give us your career path because that's going to help us if we have to choose between some closed classes. And I see that you're a broadcasting or that's something you're wanting. I'm going to try to make sure that we get we take care of you make sure you're in the right classes. All right. So then the thing is, that I don't want this to get confused between smart core and core. When I talk about core here, I'm talking about your core subject classes. Okay. So everyone has to take English, math, a history and a science at, at one point. Now, seniors, 
You're only going to have to take an English, a math, and a social studies. And some of you won't even have to take a social studies. But those are your like your, your core classes, non-elective classes. We want you to click right here and pick a class. All right, then you're going to put, for all of you guys, our future juniors and future seniors, we need you to pick at least three elective career-focused classes. So junior, uh, future juniors, you're going to pick English, math, social studies, and a science. Then you're going to pick your three electives, and you're going to give us two alternatives. Now, you know, if you have more electives, that's okay. Fill in as many as you can. But we need seven classes plus two alternatives. That's what we need on this sheet. Seven classes, two alternatives. I need you to watch for the U arrows because that means it must be paired with that class. So you have to click both of them. Make sure there's not a thing that says needs teacher approval. And also, there are some classes that are, ha are half or one semesters, and you have to pair them. And so then we want a signature and a form. So I say all this is because we're doing something new this year. We are going to go to online registration. And that's where you log into your hack. In your ha and by the way, some of you log into your hack. It's been two years. Log in. All right. So log into your hack and, and put in your request. Like, but, but Mr. Davenport, how do they do this? How are well, they going to learn how to do this? By Monday, you'll have a video that is way shorter than this video that I guarantee is five minutes and 30 seconds short uh, or less that we're going to show you how to register. Because here's the deal. I know you can do it. I see all that Grubhub that's out at the table at lunch. I know you can get online and order something. It's not hard. Biggest thing is, is we've had actually some college students that have struggled and it said, I wish I would have kind of knew more about how to online register because they get to college and they kind of panic about it. So we want to kind of give you a life skill. It's imperative. And we'll talk about it with some dates that you go in there and register. You have to go online. This form is a backup form. This form is to help you get all your thoughts together. You must register online. Everybody say it with me. You must register online. Must register online. All right, next one. All right. So 10th grade, we are going to be seeing you guys February 16th, 17th, 18th, 22nd. 24th and 25th we have a, a missing date in there i think the 23rd is missing we have the junior act during that time that's why we're kind of splitting the 10th grade registration up we see asway's class on the 16th gateless class on the 17th hills class on the 18th the 19th is going to be digital for our digital kids um, and they're not going to be by class we're going to be getting them and scheduling them as we can then on the 22nd we see jones's and robinson's classes together on those days the 24th, which is the day after the ACT test that we have for the juniors, we're going to see wins. And then on the 25th, we'll see Wilson's. Then the 26th, which is also another Flex Friday, we'll be tying up the 10th grade digital uh, registration. So those of you kids that are in the Digital Academy, be checking your emails because we will be sending out information on how we're going to do that registration online virtually. Okay? All right, so here we go. So that means... For all 10th graders, not not juniors, but 10th graders, registration, and it's popping up right now, you'll see it on the screen, is we will open up Hack on the 8th of February. That's Monday the 8th. We will close it on the 15th. That's that Monday before we start meeting with the students. You will not allow to get back into it to make any changes. So that will you will close. We will start meeting with you guys at that point. And we'll go in and submit. So we'll we're gonna close you out of it so we can go in and finalize registration. Juniors, that means on the 16th, your registration will open up. You won't be able to get in a hack before that. You'll be able to get in a hack then, and then you'll be able to go in and submit your classes, and you will have a whole week until these dates that are gonna come up right now. I so said we see Coffin's class on March. First, which is a Monday. We see Hoffman's class on March 2nd, Jernigan's class on March 3rd, Lee's class on March 4th. Our March 5th is going to be for our digital CPDA kids. And then Miss Menlin's class will be March 8th. And Miss Howard's class and any makeups, if we don't catch you, we're going to, that's where we're going to grab all of our makeups, will be done on March 9th. And then we will probably filter in some more digital kids on those days following March 9th and tying up our loose ends March 9th through the 12th or the tip through the 12th. Um, so if you're digital juniors, be checking your emails. I'm telling you guys, we've been doing senior credit checks this last week, sending out links to schedule, 
senior credit checks with my seniors and some of them took four or five emails and CCing parents before they responded to those emails. Don't be that student. Respond to the emails when you do get that information and make sure that you're staying on top of that because registration is very important. Now, real quickly, all students, uh, we want you to register. This is, we're talking to our digital and to, that is if you're planning on being on campus. There yeah. will be a digital option next year, but we're not sure what that is. And so what we need you to do is plan on being on campus because that tells us what electives you want, what it kind of helps us plan. And it kind of, and then we will release whatever that digital plan is uh, in enough time for you to be able to change and do all the things that you need to do. So we don't worry about signing up for digital classes. There, just sign up like you're planning on being on campus. And then when that option is open to you, then you will be able to go register for that. All right, this is tying up the end of this. Uh, guys, I just want to thank you for watching, for paying attention. If you have any questions or concerns, what I need you to do is reach out to your counselor. You know who your counselor is now. You've seen our pictures. You can get to it. You know where the Student Success Center is located. Send us an email. Let us know what your questions are, even if it's before we're going to meet. If you're filling out your form and you have questions, we've been getting emails already from Ninth Grade Academy, and I'm loving it because they are asking some really good questions. So make sure you reach out to us if you have questions. Don't 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 fret over this. Don't stumble through this. Let us help guide you. We are looking forward to meeting with you guys, um, and we are just thank you for letting us be a part of this journey with you. And remember to watch my five minute or less video on how to register online. You must log on in the hack and request guys have a great day don't forget to register online have a great day